Okay. All right. Guys, right. financial management. Uh, if I see chapter two. Chapter two. Do you zoom in? Are you zooming in? You gotta have to have nice big letters, okay? You gotta keep me right yes. from here up. Chapter two is firms, funds, and the financial market.
Now, we get to the general idea that's going to be chapter 2, section 1. And to section 1, that will be page 30. I can put in a little 30 in the corner. Is the basic structure, basic structure of, in this case, financial market. Basic. is relatively straightforward. You have borrowers. Borrowers. Oh, I think I have a red color, but let's use this one. Borrowers. These are people with, you say, insufficient funds. People with less funds that they need, who are willing to borrow and pay interest. The key is interest rate. You want to use someone else's money, you have to pay interest for the benefit of using it. Borrowers borrow money to Finance, we say finance purchases. The purchases will be one of the two kinds specifically for businesses. Now I'm talking about businesses. Businesses will borrow money for capital expenditures. I explained last time capital expenditure is basically machines, equipment, and other long term capital. All right, well, I can do that uh, thing here. It's called capital expenditures. These are the long term assets. That's what businesses borrow money for. And the other major one is called working capital. Working capital is associated either with making current expenses, possibly even paying salaries, but for buying inventories. So if you buy, let's say, you upon the dealer and you buy 10 scooters and motorcycles, these are your inventories until you sell. So, you borrow the money, you bring in the 10 motorcycles, as you sell those motorcycles, you pay down your debt. These are the borrowers. Number two, savers. Savers are those who spend less than they earn. If you spend less, you earn more. If you spend less, the difference is savings. Okay. Savers will eventually become or transform themselves as lenders. If it's a household, if you save hundred dollars, you technically lend it to the bank. Now, the bank will lend it to the firm or corporation, but in general, have borrowers, those who have less funds they need, savers and those who have more funds they need. And number three will be, again, basic structure. Who are here the players? Who are the players? Financial institutions. Now, in the textbook, it says, and I'll write it very clearly, for almost always, financial institution is exactly the same as financial intermediary. Financial intermediary.
The basic idea is relatively straightforward. You got over here sailors. Sailors, like household people, you're not going to lend money direct to some business that you don't know. That's not going to happen. What you're going to do is you're going to lend your money to a financial intermediary. The most common financial intermediary will be a commercial bank, but probably in the chapters coming, it could be a mutual fund or a hedge fund or an insurance company or whatever else. But think of it as a commercial bank. And then the commercial bank will lend it to a business. Oh, 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 business which is, in this particular case, borrower. Now, it's perfectly possible that a business will be a saver. So one business who has extra, extra money or makes more money, is more profitable, will invest or put their money in the financial intermediary. And financial intermediary will borrow the money, meaning lend the money to someone else, to another financial institution. So you have extra money over here. So over here, these guys will be making payments and the savers will be getting, respectively, two things. They will be getting, a, oh, I need a little more space, okay. Let's try and do this. A little more space, just a little bit. So, these guys here are savers. They pay out here. And the financial institution will pay back. Okay. Red color. Principal. Principal. Principal is the original amount of money that you give the bank. So if you deposit in the bank $1,000, $1,000 is the principal. So the bank will pay you back the principal of $1,000. And on top of that, as an extra, as a compensation for the time and for the risk, they'll pay you interest. Okay. Now, when the borrower makes a payment, the payment always has two components. The payment has a component of principal, so they're paying down part of the principal, and they're paying some interest. Oh, oh, oh that's the T. Interest on top of the principal. Well, that's a simple, basic structure. All right. And now I'm leaving this part over here, the financial institutions, for section two. This is chapter two, now section two is point two, two. And they call it the financial marketplace, financial institutions. All right, well, here's a great example. Here's a great example of a guy who's an author in finance and was not quite as competent in financial economics. And he says, financial marketplace. The financial marketplace is called financial market. And then he says, financial institutions. He's confusing the financial institutions with the financial markets, okay? That's very common for people to confuse the financial institution. The financial institutions, we already studied them. There will be some of them. Commercial banks, insurance companies, mutual companies, hedge funds, okay? And the financial place will be financial markets, will be bond market, stock market, money market, okay? That's what I'll be doing for the next two 
two or three hours till the end of this chapter that you need to understand. But it's here, it's important to understand. Even the author is confused about the whole topic. That's what makes finance a little tricky. All right, so the topic number two is looking at the contents, financial institutions. Now, for this particular course, all you're expected to know is who are the main groups of financial institutions, which are the financial institutions. Basically, you need to learn the list and know what each institution is or what each institution does. All right, so, so a financial institution, again, is a business, here's one very nice definition, which intermediates or which specializes to channel, do we call these excess funds or people with, we call these uh, people with excess funds to those with shortage of funds. So, Financial institutions are in the business, we say, of channeling, channeling funds. They transfer funds from those of surplus to those of deficiency. Now, here's a nasty, tricky, confusing word. Funds is the general word we use for money. Uh, money is relatively clear. We understand money as in a bank. Note. Funds will involve different types and different forms of money. Okay, and I might be getting into that a little bit. But funds is just a general word. Also, funds can mean, in this particular case, what's called financial resource. Financial resource. Financial funds, plural, becomes financial resource. So, they channel, they shuttle money back and forth between those who have more and those who need more. All right. Now, let's see what we have here. Again, the author is a little bit uh, confused. Let's do this. Number one. Uh, number one. Commercial banks. This is the most popular inst financial institution. It is the best known institution and the least understood. That's why we have a full course on money and bank. You know. uh, but what is a commercial bank? It has two key characteristics. Accept deposits. This part, this part of accepting deposits, it's called depository bank. Loan bank. 
Now, I've tried to explain uh, in my previous course, and it's relatively simple and straightforward. It's not clear what the word bank means. It's not clear. When we say bank, I personally don't understand what bank exactly means. Bank has many different meanings for different people, like happiness, okay? And bank is not a clear term, it's not a well-defined term, okay? So we usually avoid, or when we say bank, we usually mean commercial bank, okay? Bank could mean central bank, okay? Bank originally means, comes from Italian, banca meaning desk. These are people who work on a desk on the street, and they were mostly moneylenders, okay? So originally, banking originated as moneylending operation, but it's not clear what's a bank. Commercial bank is, now let's change the definition, which is the same definition, it is financial institution engaging in depository banking and loan banking at the same time. It has to do both at the same time to be a commercial bank. You got a lot of financial institutions who accept deposits and are not commercial banks. There are a lot of different institutions that make loans and don't accept deposits and they make loans but are not banks either. Each of these institutions has a special name. So commercial bank is making both. Now a commercial bank can do a whole bunch of other things. They can have a little insurance business on the side, they'll have a little brokerage business on the side, they'll be doing a whole bunch of other things, maybe payments, maybe all sorts of other things. And these are the secondary part. The main part of the business is this. Okay? And these are the two characteristics. You require these two to call it a commercial bank and therefore fall with everything else that they have. Let's see what else we got here. All right. Well, here's the next one. Next one, the category is number two. And this category is called non-bank financial institutions. So, which are the non-bank institutions? Now, financial services corporations is very confusing, very unclear. Uh, let's write it out. Right, we studied money, uh, financial markets and institutions, we didn't get this really. It is simply finance company. Finance company. All right, so what is a finance company? Finance company is a non-bank financial institution which makes loans. Or, if you want to say it different, is a financial institution which makes loan but does not accept deposits. It doesn't accept deposits. So, I've taken a little bit of notes here. So, what does the finance company do? Okay, I'll put in a little arrow under one. So what do they do? Well, number one, they do 
commercial loans. For the most part, commercial loans, again, they do commercial loans, but don't accept deposit. Okay, that's the big difference. They don't accept. If it doesn't accept deposit, it's a completely different beast. Okay. It's, it's completely different characteristics. Commercial loans is also pretty much the same as I'll put in for you because, again, your business students could be confusing, exactly the same as business loans. Now, business loans and commercial loans could be small business, a right, little restaurant and this and that, whatever, or big business. Big business is called corporate and becomes a corporate loan. So you can have small business loans or it could be corporate loans. Corporate loan is technically a business loan. Number next, uh, commercial insurance. They could be commercial insurance, shipping insurance, trucking insurance, manufacturing, whatever that might be. Another thing will be. Equipment, leasing. Equipment leasing means that the finance company will purchase the equipment. A truck, a machine, could be a printer, could be a computer, and then they will lease it or lend it to a business. The business will borrow it for a year. Could be a big, let's call it construction crane, and you're a construction company. The finance company will purchase the crane, it will own it or the truck, and then it will give it to the construction company for 12 months. And in return, the construction company will be making lease payments. Okay, in return. Let's see what else we got in here. Oh, they can do it. Credit cards. You all are familiar with this. Now let's do another little thing. Credit consolidation. Uh, these are now on page 33 for those who like to, and this is on page 32. What is credit consolidation? You borrow one credit card and you borrow another credit card. Oh, you have a car loan and then you have a loan for your furniture in your house, okay? And then you're going to loan for a MacBook. Again, you got to understand that people in America aren't like you. They don't have savings. They borrow for everything. They go and buy jeans. They borrow for the jeans. They go and buy a computer. They borrow for a computer. 90% of purchases there are made on credit. And surprise, they made on credit because they don't have the money, they don't have the cash to pay for it. So they're deep in debt. Everything around them is on debt. Well, if you got, let's say, oh, and they have student debt, okay, they can have, you know, laptop and furniture and all sorts of six, seven or eight different types of debt. What the finance company does says, okay, instead of making some payment here and payment here and payment here and everywhere else, all we're going to do is consolidate the debt. You will borrow from us 
one big amount, let's say $50,000, we will pay off all of your debts and you're going to be making only one single payment to us. Okay. And the idea is that some of these credit cards will be at interest rates of 12 or 15 or 18 or 21 percent. If you have a consumer credit, you bought a laptop, the laptop interest will be easy, easily 12 percent. Okay. So some of these high interest payments, when you consolidate them, they pay them off and now we're going to be paying only one a lot lower interest, maybe six, maybe eight, whatever percent you're able to negotiate. So credit consolidation first, you reduce the number of payments from five or ten to maybe one, and you reduce the overall interest, number two, and you structure the term or the maturity. Maybe you can make it two years if you can handle the payments. If you can't handle the payments, you stretch it out to three or you stretch it out to ten years. Okay? So you stretch out the term as much as you can handle. Okay? Gotta understand. Financial markets, financial banks, they want to bleed you. Every month they want to get a liter of blood. But they can't take three liters of blood because you're going to be dead. They want to get as much as they can out of you without having you die. Because next month you, you die, you can't make a thing on that. So that's the idea. You always want to know how much you can get without leaving them financially dead. Okay? Alright, so if a person's got five liters of blood, you can take up to a liter, liter and a half without leaving them dead. You know, you take more than two, it's over. In finance, you can take up to 40, 50, even 60 percent of their total income without leaving them dead. In other words, if these guys make $1,000, you can get 600 or 650 and leave 350 for their food. So about 40 to 50 to 60 percent is what you can get reasonably. Okay. All right, that's this business. Let's see what else they got. Cause, uh, well, that's more than enough. Number two. Insurance. Companies. I don't want to get too much into it, but yeah, you make life insurance. This little thing means same as before, okay? So this means life insurance. If somebody dies, they'll make a payment. But they keep collecting the payments, hoping that you don't die, okay? And all sorts of life insurance. Remember, the only way to make money is to take people's money and not give it back. That's how you make money. If you're giving even more, you're not making money, you're losing money. And the other one is property. Sometimes called property and casualty. There may be a fire, okay. With property, it could be even like accident, motorcycle accident or car accident. Now, in an accident, you can have two types of insurance. You can have property to insure your Lexus, or you can have a life to insure your life on top of the car or the motorcycle itself. Okay, so it's possible to have a combination mixture. Let's see what else we got in here. Oh, there is one other very important recent development. It is known as debt insurance. Debt insurance. Yeah. 
when a corporation or somebody borrows, okay, and the bank lends them money, the bank may want to offload, it's called credit risk. So what they do, the insurance company, insures credit risk, the risk of default. So if a company borrows, the insurance company can say to the bank, look, uh, if these guys pay you, everything's fine. If they don't pay you, we will pay for the company. Okay? So you have a borrower, you have a lender, and if the borrower defaults, the insurer will pay. In this way, the lender is secure or secured from credit risk, or we say insured from credit risk. So that has become is a recent development in the insurance business. And because insurance companies are not experts in credit risk and debt, or we call it loan insurance, they got themselves in trouble. You know, insurance companies like AIGs went bankrupt. This particular debt insurance, uh, you don't have to know only the few people who did uh, financial markets and institutions. The majors are called CDS, standing for Credit Default Swap. All right, number three. Number three will be investment. Investment. Now, for the business students, uh, again, those who not take the course, investment banks are not a bank, and they're not investment. They don't do investments. It's a name which is meant to confuse people. It's meant to present them for what they're not. They present themselves as bankers, but they're not what they call themselves bankers, which they're not. So, what they do is they specialize first and foremost in issuing, issuing, issuing securities. And security, the word security, is exactly the same as, let me see where is my thing here, as financial instruments. So they issue or facilitate the issues of financial instruments. As you can guess, financial instruments will be coming in the lecture, the next section, or after that. So which are the main securities that they do. Number one, stocks or stock. Number two, bonds. Number three, commercial paper. And I'll be explaining these next time when I'm doing the financial instruments. Okay? That's what this chapter is. This chapter is on financial institutions, markets, in instruments. Today I'm focusing on the institutions. Alright, so investment banks do issue securities. They also do what else they do? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what, what, what do investment banks else do? Oh, wasn't that like oh, oh, that was like <laughs> four months ago. Who could remember four months ago, right? It's called the toilet flush, you know? You fill it, you fill it for the exam, and when the final exam comes, you flush, everything goes down, and you forget everything. Number two, mergers. As in, one company merging with another company, and acquisition. This is basically 
putting two or more companies together. Next one is called a spin-off, is the exact opposite. A spin-off is taking a piece of one company and sending off that particular piece to some other investor. So let's see what else we do. That's more than enough. Well, well, we got about five more minutes. And I should be more or less done. The third group is called investment companies. All right. Investment company is just a general term. There is no such thing as an investment company. One particular that everybody knows is, let me see, okay, I, I, I can do it here. One, mutual fund. Mutual fund is people invest money in the mutual fund and the mutual fund invests the money for them. The mutual fund buy, buys stocks and bonds. Now, the mutual fund, here's the key. Number one, issues shares. So, the mutual fund issues share. You become a shareholder. You share the profits and the losses of the mutual fund. So if the mutual fund has a 10% profit, you make a 10% profit. In other words, actually you are an investor in the mutual fund, and then the mutual fund invests in companies. It will invest in companies that issue shares, and now invest in, in what? Stocks and bonds. We call this nicely debt and equity. All right. The fund may have a load. What's a load? Like flash long time ago. Load is the fee that you pay to the salesman for selling you the fund. Or, which is the same thing, the fee which the fund pays to the salesman. We call this fee commission. Commission paid to the salesman for selling the fund. So it could be a load fund or no load fund. Low load fund means without a fee. You need to understand the word load means fee. Again, why do you use the word load? The answer is when you say fee, people understand what is a fee. Oh, I gotta pay 2% fee. People say, oh, I don't want to pay a fee. Oh, commission 2%, no. So they make words which disguise what they mean. So it's always, the trick is to choose words in such a way that people don't understand what's going on. Okay. Uh, someone's looking at the clock, let me see what else. Uh, Next one, hedge fund. And here, number three for the mutual fund is regulate. The government regulates respects. Hedge fund is unregulated. It can invest in anything. It can invest in gold, in oil, in commodities. It invests very risky 
okay? Unregulated any way they want. They can short, they can do whatever they want, okay? So hedge funds are a lot riskier, okay? And only for special customers called qualified investors. Basically, qualified, if you're rich and smart and can handle your finances, you can invest in a hedge fund. And the last one uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about, number three is private equity firm. A private equity firm is a firm or business which specializes, again, it's an investment company. So, it's a firm which invests in private equity. So, what is private equity? Private equity is in shares, is in ownership of non-publicly traded companies. In other words, they invest in shares that you cannot buy on the exchange. Mutual funds and mutual hedge funds, they invest in publicly traded companies. A publicly traded company is traded on an exchange and everybody can buy a publicly traded company. In a private equity, you buy companies only that are private, meaning whose shares are not traded. So this is a very specialized. These companies are usually new not like Microsoft in their brand new companies. They are unproven. They are developing this special drug that will make you skinny and will make my hair grow again, right? And hopefully, if they do that, they're gonna be phenomenally rich, right? Okay? But it's not very likely they'll develop that drug, okay? So maybe there's a chance one in a hundred, maybe one in a thousand, maybe one in a million. So these companies are also very risky. But if they can cure cancer, they'll make billions, more like hundreds of billions of dollars if they get to cure the cancer, okay? So that's what private equity, this is a new, Young, unproven, unestablished firms. All right, it's good enough for today? Yes. All right, thank you.